Hello from Susie and me. The headlines from Look East tonight. Hundreds ignore the Christmas drink drive message and lose their licences. Get ready for Wi-Fi, the cordless link to the internet, wherever you are. If you're watching this, chances are you're using this. And if you're into your bowls, stay tuned for some top tips from a world champion. Hello, hundreds of drivers. Everybody loves a golden anniversary, don't they? And this year we can all celebrate one for a landmark that's touched most of our lives in this region. Fifty years ago this year, the BBC switched on the Tackleston transmitter in Norfolk. And for the first time, people across East Anglia received a clear picture. Andrew Sinclair reports. It stands 505 feet in the middle of the Norfolk countryside, the highest man-made structure in the county. It can be seen from more than 10 miles away. Whether it's the design or its history, Tackleston fascinates many. This thing can actually withstand a near miss from a thermonuclear warhead landing a mile away. Hadrian Jeffs has been interested in the transmitter since he was a boy. He's planning to write a book about it. I can't think of anything in recent history, maybe the last 500 years, that so brought Norfolk into British society as the arrival of certainly television and broadcasting in general. And it was because of Tackleston that you could effectively broadcast all high-definition TV all over Norfolk, uh, except to King's Lynn, unfortunately, which actually caused a huge stink in Parliament. Tackleston was actually a bit of a rush job. The BBC wanted proper TV reception in East Anglia before ITV, using the Mendelsham transmitter in Suffolk, got established. And this is what viewers could see. Hello, everyone. I'm Jennifer Gay, one of the children's hour announcers. This is how television would begin in the evening. It would start at five to five like this, then go off again at six. Louis Barth, a writer and self-confessed anorak, is another one fascinated by the Norfolk transmitter. They could have probably received just about some kind of picture before, either from Alexandra Palace or Sutton Coalfield, or, you know, on a freaky weather day from Holm Moss um, near Manchester. The main thing about this was it gave a clearer picture and it gave a chance for regional programming. Today, Tackleston carries not just television pictures, but also radio signals and lots of private communications. Everyone benefits, except those who happen to live nearby. Believe it or not, it's impossible to get a decent signal. It's very fuzzy, yeah, yeah. teletext is non-existent, it's just rubbish to be honest. you think living next to a master it would be better, but it's not. Because of security concerns we can't show you much of the inside, but it's an impressive place, the cables as thick as heating pipes. Television has changed a lot since 1956 and it still is changing. Will tax survive another 50 years? Everyone here hopes so. Andrew Sinclair, BBC Look East. Yeah, nice to see pictures of Muffin the Mule. <laughs> it takes you back. I think it's funny that the people who live next door to it can't get a clear signal. I don't think they would think it's very <laughs> no, funny. No, no, probably not amusing. <laughs>